of the border, right? That little white border there, which would be the area that you would get if you were to take the area of the wall and subtract from it the area of the carpet. That would give you the area of the border. All right, and that's the same for anything. So if you have a circle within a circle, triangle within a rectangle, it doesn't matter. Two geometric overlapping shapes, subtract one from the other, you'll get the area in between. All right, a lot of the problems in the homework involve that concept, all right? So when I'm looking for the area of the wall that's not covered by the rug, I'm gonna take the area of the wall in general, which is x squared plus 17x plus 30, and subtract from it x squared plus x minus 20, whatever that difference is would be the area of that unoccupied border, all right? So I'd have to distribute my negative. It's the most common error in any math class ever. People forgetting to do that. Doesn't matter what time of day, he's always there for us. Huh? The aftershock. <laughs> All right. So you distribute your negative and then combine like terms. So this is not double distributing, it's not factoring, it's a unit ago. It's just simplifying. All right, so I have an x squared minus x squared, which becomes what? Zero, so you put a strike through both of those. Meh and meh. We have 17x minus x, which is what? 16x. And, th and then uh, 30 plus 20 is 50. All right, so that it, with the appro appropriate units would be our area. So the units would be square feet. You have to distribute the negatives because I just subtract it. Like I'm so it depends on how you write it. So if you were to write this minus this without parentheses. I wrote it with parentheses. You wrote it with parentheses and you just did it with your, in your head? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. So find the dimensions of the rug, right? Now, this is a situation where they didn't tell us a length, they didn't tell us a width, they just told us the overall area. The only thing that we can assume is that we're looking for real factors here. So area is length times width, so x squared plus x minus 20 has to be equal to the product of two factors, two real factors. All right, so no radicals or anything like that. It's got to multiply to x squared, so x and x. You can do the x chart if you want, but really I'm just looking for two numbers that'll multiply to negative 20 that are going to also add to a 1, really, because that's an implied 1 in front of the x. So two numbers that multiply to negative 20. Negative 20 and 1 is a possibility. 5 and, uh, negative negative four, yeah. five and negative 4. So positive 5 and negative 4. All right. And 5 minus 4 would give you the 1, so that, that's what we need. So the dimensions would be x plus 5 feet by x minus 4 feet. Last part's really just asking you to do the same thing, just with a different polynomial. All right, so we know it's gonna be x and x. All right, I have to multiply to 30, so this is the product. And I have to add to the 17, so that's my sum. What did you say? 15. 15 and 2. So plus 15, plus 2. So my dimensions, again, satisfy the regions, people. X plus 15 feet 
to inconvenience people. I'm telling you, those Regis people. You're, you're kind of one of them, right? <laughs> it's not too great. No, I'm only by by extension. I have to. I'm forced to do it. I'm oh. talking about the people who make oh. up the exams ah. and make up the rules on how they they're graded. If I were to distribute it out using the shortcut, you could jump right from the question to the answer in one shot. But that sort of starts to work against you when you have a leading coefficient here. In this case, a leading coefficient of two x. Well, coefficient is 2, but the leading term is 2x. So what I'm going to do is distribute. I'm going to actually just use the, the double distributing process. So I'm going to distribute the 2x to each term in the second binomial. I'm going to get 2x squared plus 10x. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the 3. And that's going to give me a plus 3x plus 15. All right, now this is the key step in everything. Now, because we're gonna work backwards with the three x squared plus eight x plus four, but this step in the process is giving us a clue as to how we can go about doing things. Because what we have here is a polynomial, even though we can combine like terms, we have a four term polynomial. If you simplify it, it becomes trinomial. But as it is right now, it's four terms. What factor and technique do we, no do we normally use if there are four terms in the polynomial. We use grouping, all right? So if I were given this problem right here and I was told to factor it, I would put a line right down the middle, all right? Because I could simplify this and clean it up, but that won't help us learn the process. I could draw a line down the middle, factor out a GCF here. That GCF would be what? 2x. And the other part, the GCF would be what? Exactly. So pull out the 2x here. You'd have an x plus 5. Pull out the 3 here. You'd also have an x plus 5. And then you have the common x plus 5, right? So x plus 5 would be the common factor, leaving us with a 2x plus 3. All right, which is what we started with. All right, so what this is telling me is that if I have a polynomial in this form, so they're telling us that we have to learn how to factor ax squared plus bx plus c, but if I'm given it like this, then I could use factoring by grouping to come up with my factors. All right, the problem is I don't have something nice and convenient here like I do here, uh, the 2x squared plus 10x, blah, blah, blah. It's three terms. If I could somehow make this into a four-termed expression, I'd be in great shape. All right, so that's the technique, really. What we want to do is try to break up the 8x into the sum of two values. Now, this is, this is the issue. It could be trial and error, but there's actually a better approach. All right? I'll, I'll show you a trial and error first, because sometimes, sometimes I get lazy, bless you, and I don't want to do all the work, bless you. So I go with trial and error, you know, because sometimes it's like, well, I'll just give it, a give it a shot. If it works, then I'm going to go with it. But sometimes, uh, you know, I'm just spinning my wheels. But let's say, for example, I looked at the 3x squared. That's fine. I wanted to break up the 8x so that it has a common factor. That's important. So let's say I'll have a 6x plus 2x, right? The only question I'm asking at this point is not, not where do I come up with a 6x and 2x, but 6x and 2x adds to 8x, right? So this is an equivalent expression. So it could pos <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. It could possibly be the case that I stumbled upon the correct breakdown of the 8x. If that's right, then when I partition it down the middle, I could pull out the common factor, in this case 3x. If I pull out a 3x, what's left over? x plus 2. 
All right. If I pull out a common factor on the other side, well, what would that common factor be? Two. two. I'll also have an x plus two. And then I would have x plus two times three x plus two. And those would be my factors. All right, so I stumbled upon it. I got lucky. All right. It was completely by, because you might look at this and say, okay, eight x, how about seven x and one x? That wouldn't work. All right, four x and four x, wouldn't work. All right, five x and three x, still not gonna work. The only possibility that's gonna work is the six x and two x. That was my first guess, all right? Because it's eight x, it's not insurmountable. If I had like a three x in here, there's only a, a handful of ways in which you can get to a three x. I shouldn't have gone through. But if this were an eighty x, you know, the, the larger the number of this, the larger the number of ways that you can add to it. Addition is tough when it comes to that, because if it, if that were an eighty x, it could be one and seventy nine, two and seventy eight, three and seventy seven, all the way down to like forty and forty. All right. So disaster. You don't want that. You want a technique. So what we do. You might have, uh, if, if you've kind of looked ahead or seen any of this before, you might have heard of the AC method. All right. So what I do, because I have the 3x squared plus 8x plus 4. Because the key ingredient here is this breakdown. If I know what this breakdown is, everything else is going to work itself out. So if I can just have a technique that will help me do that, I'll be in good shape. So what we do is we take the A value and multiply it by the C value. All right, again, here's my A, well, including the sign, my B, and my C. All right, so my X chart, instead of just being the four on top with the eight on the bottom, it's gonna be AC on the top with B on the bottom. And in all honesty, that's what it always was. It's just the A value is always a one. So what we were doing was we were taking whatever this number was, the C value, and putting it on top and going from there the only reason we were able to do that is because the A value was always one. We were using A times C on the top, but since A was one, it was just simplifying down to C. It didn't make a difference, all right? But my X chart would now be, instead of four on top, it would be 12 on top with an eight on the bottom. The process here is the same. Give me two numbers that will multiply to 12 that also add to eight. Six and two. Six and two, shockingly. AKA, that was my guess. All right, six and two or two and six. All right, now why do I say or two and six? Because the next step is gonna tell me that these are the coefficients of the X term. So I have three X squared plus six X plus two X plus four. All right, the reason why I say two and six is, is fine also is because if I, if I do it this way, if I do three x squared plus two x plus three x, I'm sorry, plus six x plus four, it's gonna work out for the same answer. All right, so it does not matter. Once you figure out your two factors, it doesn't matter what order you put them in. It's always gonna work. All right, so and in math class, always is a good thing. <laughs> Doesn't always happen, but when it does, it it's pretty good. That looks pretty bad, though. That doesn't look much better. All right, so this is the key. Once you get this breakdown, it's all over. You got it. Because then, oh, I drew a line at the wrong thing. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, you split it down the middle, factor out your GCFs, and go the rest of the way. All right. It's more work. Trial and error can get you there quicker, but 
this way will always work if there are real factors. So if your expression is factorable, this method will always give you the solution. We'll get to cases where it's not always factorable, meaning that your, your solution involves radicals and stuff like that, but not yet. Not, not even in this unit. So down the line. Okay, next unit. So let's tackle another one together. All right, so I make my little X diagram. The number on the top is, is not just the negative five. It's A times C. All right, it's the A times the C value. So it would be what? Negative, negative 15. Negative two is on the bottom, just like it always was. I'll keep that in red. All right, so give me two numbers that multiply to negative 15 that also add to negative 2. 5, what did you say? Negative 5 and 3. Negative 5 and 3. I thought, I thought I heard 5 and 3. All right, once you get those numbers, that's key to everything. Once you get those numbers, the problem's going to solve itself because I'm going to say 3x squared. You could write it as plus negative, or you could just jump right to the minus 5x plus 3x minus 5. And again, it doesn't matter what order you go in. So if I put the 3, the plus 3 here, plus 3x, and then minus 5, you're still going to get the same answer. All right. And I believe, I mean, I can't think of a case off the top of my head, I believe with equal level of difficulty. So really, it's a technique you can't go wrong with. All right. So GCF for the first part would be what? All right. Which is perfect because the other part is 3x, uh, 3x minus 5. If I know they have to have matching factors, so this factor has to be the same as this one, what would the coefficient have to be in front? Oh. A one. We'll write it as a positive one, just to have that addition. Mm -hmm. Now I have the common 3x minus 5. Pull it out. 3x minus 5 times x plus 1. Poor quality box. Let's see. I had a sneaky feeling. Yeah. All right, so again, we're taking the A value and multiplying it by the C value. Now, something to be mindful of. We were always doing that. The top number within the, the X chart was always A times C. You're right. But the A value is always a one, so it didn't matter, all right? So it is these two values multiplied together. So a negative 20 in this case with a 19 on the bottom. So again. 20 and a negative 1. Wow. Or negative 1 and 20 because it won't matter which order you do it in. So 5x squared plus 20x minus, I'll write minus 1x minus 4. Partition right down the middle. GCF? 5x. 5x. Then x plus 4. Now we know that the binomial has to be the same left side to right side, so I know I'm looking at another x plus 4. What would have to be the, what would the coefficient have to be there? Negative 1. I now have a common x plus 4 that I could pull out. 
and that would leave me with a 5x minus 1. You know, trial and error could get you there. You know, you look at this and you say, all right, two numbers that I know that'll add to equal 19. I mean, it's not as simple as 8x because 19, I mean, it could be 18 and 1, 17 and 2. It could be 20 and negative 1. It could be 21 and negative 2. Could be, it could be 100 literally. and negative 81. It's literally infinite, right? It, yeah, there's infinitely many possibilities, but there's some that make more sense than others. If I know that I want to have a common factor involving a 5, then I'm looking for some pair of values, one of which is some multiple of 5, that will add to equal the 19. So then you might say 15 and 4. You know, try that, maybe, maybe it works. But the, the emphasis is on the fact that you're trying that. Here, we have a, an approach that's going to guarantee it, all right? Whereas before, it was trial and error, full-blown trial and error. Now it's, you have an algorithm. You have an approach that's going to allow you to get the answer. And that's, that's wonderful.